Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Today I'd like to show you track grouping. In a previous video I showed you how you could save track templates to help save time for setting up for complicated routing, but in this example I'll show you how to take that even further with track grouping. Let's take a look. For this example I'd like to set up as if I'm going to be recording my drums, and I've got 10 microphones for my drum set. So I'll start by inserting multiple tracks, I'll add 10, and instead of putting a name here I'll leave that blank, I like to go back and name them manually. I'll name them in the same order that my mics are laid out in routing. There's snare top, snare bottom, kick, tom one, tom two, tom three, overhead hat side, overhead ride side, and stereo room mics. So I've got room hat side and room ride side. I'll set up my routing through the routing matrix with my snare top starting at input 5 on my interface and going sequentially after that. Now that I've got my routing set up, I'll add one more track so that I can put these into a folder. Now I've got my tracks set up the way that I want, but how does grouping factor into this? I'll select all of these by first clicking on track 1 and then holding shift and clicking on track 11. The default key press for the grouping dialog is Shift G. And as you can see, I have 11 tracks selected for group 1. What I'd like to do for this group is set them up to where when I click the record arm button on track 1, it automatically arms all the subsequent tracks that are in this group. With all of the tracks selected, I will choose record arm follow and then close. Now I'll go back and select just the first track. Press Shift G again to open the dialog, and you can see that with this one track selected, it does have record arm follow marked, but I'll also mark this one as the lead. One final step that I like to do for the parent track in this case is to set this for record disable. I don't actually want anything recorded on the drum bus track, but I just want it to be the parent for these others to follow. As you can see, I now have a red flag under the record arm button for each of these tracks. And with no tracks selected, if I click record on my drum bus, the remaining tracks have armed themselves. There's many other parameters that you can do in track grouping. We have the option for volume lead and follow, pan lead and follow. You can change width, mute, solo, polarity or phase. We've already seen the record arm and also automation modes in VCA. In most cases, you'll only want to have one track selected as the lead, but in my example here, I can go back to tracks 2 through 11, go back into my group again, and I can set all of them for record arm lead as well. What this will do is no matter which of these tracks I click, all of them will become armed. Now if you don't want that behavior, you just select the desired tracks and disable that feature for the selected tracks. It's useful to rename the group so that you can tell them apart in the event that you set up multiple groups. To do that, I'll press Shift-G to go back into the same group that I'm currently working with and simply choose the Rename button in the dialog. I'll name this group Drums Record Arm. Tracks can also be part of more than one group. I'd like to add my overheads to a group to control their panning. Let's take a look. I'll start by selecting tracks 8 and 9 and pressing Shift-G to bring up the grouping dialog. We're going to switch to group number two since we don't want to change anything in the drums record arm group. And we'll rename this overhead panning. Enable the group if it's not already enabled and choose pan lead and pan follow. Also be sure to place a check mark on do not lead when following. With that group enabled, we now see that I have a green flag indicating that these two are in the same group for pan and you can still see the red flag on the record arm to indicate that they're a part of that group. Now if I move the pan knob on my overhead hat side, you can see that the ride side moves with it. In this case though, it would be beneficial to pan them opposite of each other. So I will choose track number nine, go back into that same group, and I'll mark this one for reverse pan. Be sure if you use a reverse that only one or the other is selected for that, otherwise they will both still follow the same behavior. Now with this inverted, if I move my hat side, the ride moves in the opposite direction. If I move my ride side, the hat side moves in the opposite direction. There's lots of options in the groups that you can set up to your liking, and this gives you more options to make your setups quicker and easier. I hope this helps. If you like the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee link below.
I like coffee.